Oh, no, no. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah. Hold on to your toes. Wait, mine's not working. <laughs> we are stranded. This was not the video that we planned on making. In less than 48 hours, we are going to attempt to ride these futuristic surfboards across the English Channel. At this point, we don't even know our exact route, but the plan is to take a boat over to France, get dropped off, and then depending on the route that we choose, we'll have 20 to 30 miles to get back to the UK. I honestly have no clue how big of a challenge this is gonna be. First off, these boards are not exactly easy to balance on a ride. It's been almost a year since I've ridden one, so we'll have to see if I remember how to do it. And then you have the external factors. I think if we end up not making it, it'll be because of the ocean conditions. Because the English Channel is not exactly known for having flat, calm water. And then there's the added challenge of having to cross one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. I think what terrifies me more than anything is having to pass behind a big cargo ship that's thrown up a big wake, and then that wake knocks me off my board in the middle of the English Channel. And then I'm just sitting there floating in deep, dark water, having no clue what's around me. That is probably my biggest phobia. I cannot believe we are actually doing this, but there's no backing out now. Eamon's flown all the way from Canada to join us, so I guess it's actually happening. So for once, instead of Nate asking me to join in on one of his crazy ideas, he recruited some of our best, most spontaneous friends, Eamon and Louie. Less than a week ago, Nate sent Eamon a last minute text to see if he could join us. Unsurprisingly, within three minutes, Eamon was in. Training starts now on the one wheel. We're gonna go for 35K. <laughs> and six days later, here he is in London. All right, I think I found the right house because there's a big mustache out front. Welcome home. <laughs> hey! Oh! Welcome to London. Then there's Louie. Despite the fact that he and Raya just had their first baby four weeks ago, I don't think he's capable of saying no to an adventure. But this won't be Louie's first time crossing the English Channel. Meet Andy, hey. our skipper for this adventure. Andy and Louie are childhood best friends, and they've attempted this crossing not once, not twice, but three times. That was truly terrifying. Andy's kind of like the glue that's holding this adventurous team together. Turns out there's a ton of logistics, planning, and paperwork that goes into something like this. Yeah, this is totally under control. <laughs> Andy's the one with the nautical knowledge, steering the team in the right direction. It's international waters, <laughs> yeah. This, this is where you can murder people and you can't get in trouble. But most importantly, he's the one with the boat. So after days of preparation and planning, the guys were ready to test the waters. Okay, we've got the boards, we've got the boat, and we're about to head out for a little dress rehearsal. This is either gonna make me feel a lot better or a lot worse. How are you feeling? Overwhelmingly excited for the practice. Tomorrow might be different, but right now I'm stoked. What do you think our chances are? 50 of success? 50-50. Now that we got Andy, we're 90%, man. So Louie is one of the most optimistic people that I know, so for him to give it 50-50, that says a lot. And he's the only one that has experience crossing the channel. What do you think our chances are? I've not seen you on the boards, so if you're competent and experts, as you've said you are, it'll be fine. <laughs> Here goes nothing. So we've just pulled out from behind the harbor wall and it looked like a lake out here from far away, but there's definitely a little more chop than I expected. The good news is the weather today is forecasted to be quite a bit worse than the weather tomorrow. There's a chance it will just be like a lake tomorrow morning when we're actually trying to do this. Really diving in head first here. See, we haven't even set up the boards. It's always six screws, so surely we can figure this out. Pretty sure Nate is the only one that has actually put this board together. It comes in. No, I have not. We watched how yeah, it was none put of us together. Have done it yet. <laughs> the confidence is coming in waves. Ooh, Nate got a black one. Cool. <laughs> it does Nate, match the team colors. This is the board that we're hoping to ride across the English Channel. It's called a lift foil. Basically, an electrified surfboard. There's a big lithium battery 
in the board and then it has a prop just like a boat on the back of it. And the only reason this works is because instead of riding with the board touching the water, so there's a bunch of drag, somehow with science, yes, science, you can get the board to lift up on the foil. So this will be the only thing that's in the water right here. So there's very little drag. So theoretically the lithium battery that's inside of this board should be strong enough to power this thing all the way across the English Channel. But that comes with a major caveat. You need to be good enough to ride the board. It looks fun and easy, but it's both physically and mentally exhausting. And also, an amazing adrenaline rush and so much fun. That's why we're doing this. Like were you not even phased? The, uh, oh, I'm already cold. The problem is, last time we did this, Eamon was the best. So if he's struggling, we're all really in trouble. <laughs> you know what's also a big thing? What's that? Yeah. you really feel the waves. Really. So like when you're riding into the waves like that, the wave uh, kicks your balance. So that'll be bigger tomorrow. You reckon? Yeah, because you're out in the middle of the, the channel. There, there'll be much more swell. Hang ten, baby! You got this, Louie! Wait, mine's not working. Oh, no! No! Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it's so cold! Ah. It's colder than Alcatraz! Oh, it's cold! Oh, uh, can I just say how happy I am that I didn't get talked into doing this? Thank you, Ava and Louie, for being friends with Nate and getting me out of this one. Oh, you gotta keep your feet out of the water. It's so cold. It like hurts. This board is tiny. Not bad so far. He's just getting a feel for it. Remembering what it's like. It's all right. Come on, Nate. I'm tired already. <laughs> it's been a total of... Three minutes. <laughs> Nate hasn't quite gotten out of the water yet. Oh. Oh my goodness. Honestly, after five minutes of riding this thing, I don't think there's any way we're doing this tomorrow. What's going on, Louie? It's not bad. Have you tried turning the battery off and then back on again? I am so glad we had this practice today. I mean, honestly, it's gonna be hard. Yeah. I think we're good. <laughs> That's enough practice. You're ready. I'm ready, dude. You're ready. I'm signing you off as ready. I'll meet you in France. <laughs> <laughs> Ava's having the most fun, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know. It's taking them a lot longer than I thought it would to get the hang of it again. My legs hurt. <laughs> I knew the waves were gonna make it hard. I didn't think it was gonna be this hard though. Look at those guys. So think of 50% chance? 50-50. Uh, no, I think there's a lot less chance you're gonna do it now, maybe like 20% chance. I'm having a really hard time getting a read on how everybody's feeling right now. I think they're all trying to stay positive. It seems like it's a lot harder than everybody was expecting. They're all smiling though, so. You look very confident, Carol. <laughs> how you going, mate? Oh, I'm changing my percentage chance of us making it to 10. Oh no. <laughs> Y'all are smashing it. <laughs> what was that? Oh, that's my fight. Oh. No, it wasn't. It was. Was what? it? Yeah, it's gone. Thank you, Andy, for that offering to the sea. Yeah. For, for safe passage tomorrow. <laughs> Real quick, we wanna say a big thank you to AG1 for continuing to support this channel and our crazy ideas, no matter how doomed to failure that they are. Literally everyone who is living in this house right now drinks AG1 almost every single day. Let me show you some proof. Kara brought a Ziploc bag of 40 travel packs with us. All right, and Louie, keep theirs in their cabinet. What do you got in here? Carry on and check just in case you lose it. 
the reason that we all love this stuff is because it's an all-in-one nutritional supplement that has 75 vitamins, minerals, whole food source ingredients, prebiotics, probiotics, all the good stuff your body needs and all in one convenient pack. For us, we're moving around all the time, so it's really important that we don't have to carry around a ton of supplements, but this is super easy. You just grab one of these travel packs or if you're stationary, a scoop, you put it in eight to 12 ounces of water, give it a good shake, and then you have your nutritional insurance for the day. I'm gonna have to clean that off for I and Louis carpet. <laughs> Did it get my mustache? Things I have to worry about these days. If you'd like to try AG1 for yourself, you can use the link in the description below and you will get five free travel packs. I promise one of them will not be drank like the one I just used. And also a year supply of vitamin D. That is using the link in the description below. And if you're curious about how it tastes and worried it might be a little too green for you, I would say it's one of the most unique flavors I've ever tried. The two closest tasting notes I can give you are green apple and bubble gum. It tastes a lot less green than it looks. You're ready to try it out. Click the link in the description below. Now back to the video. <laughs> I didn't quite get all the powder out of that pack. Mm. You have a lot of rolls today. Wow, what would you do without me? Chef, videographer, spotter. Warrior. Potential drone pilot. <laughs> I feel like the art of making PB&Js is very polarizing. This is not how I usually make them. Today's the day. Okay, remember left side. <laughs> left side, left, left side. Left, 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 left. Okay, we're slightly stressful morning, but we're off. So Louis, Andy, and Eamon are on the boat. They're gonna meet us there. We're gonna get the boat, drive across to France, put the boards in the water, and ride back. That is the plan for the day. I think one of the reasons I've been super stressed about this, in addition to just my fear of being in the water, is because I kind of feel like the instigator of this whole thing. Like, I think it was my idea, and I definitely kind of like rallied the whole team to do this now. Eamon flew all the way from Canada. Louis has a newborn baby, so I feel like it's a really big deal that everyone's here doing this together, and I just want it to go decently well. And honestly, there's just been so many things to figure out and reasons why we probably shouldn't be doing this that I would have given up if I wouldn't have had other people already committed to doing this and had reorganized their lives to be here and do it. It's feeling really forced at the moment. You know, sometimes your gut instinct just tells you like, it's probably just a better idea to let this one go. That's what I've been feeling in my stomach the past couple days. Everyone dresses so cute in the UK. That's what you're thinking about right now. <laughs> We've never started filming a video of a challenge and not finished it. That's true. I think this adventure has the highest probability of failure. Okay, we are on a random beach somewhere in Dungeness. The boat is now sideways. Okay, that's not good. Oh, that's a big wave in the boat. We still have a boat. We literally almost lost it, but we're good now. <laughs> Sounds like we um, missed the adventure. We're, yeah, we're not too bad now. The boat's only one minute away, and then we'll bring it all over there and hopefully quickly hit the beach, load it up. Doesn't this feel like some weird dystopian future? <laughs> like, it's like a nuclear dystopian <laughs> wasteland. Like, what is this place? Especially with like the random people. Honestly, the creepiest place I've ever been. If it was dark. It's so weird. Yes! I feel like we just did like a rescue mission. I feel like a Navy SEAL right now. That was awesome. Here we go! To France! Not better the second time. I feel like somehow we've been successful just by getting on the boat. Like no matter what happens after this, we've done pretty good. We did it! Woo! Right, let's go home. Maybe don't put this on the camera. I am taking my pants off. All right. Ow, ow. Out at sea, do whatever you want. Not quite in international waters yet. This might be illegal. <laughs> Every step of this trip has been a challenge, including trying to put this wetsuit on in a moving boat. Ah. Hold on tight. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? I've just seen the cargo ships for the first time. <laughs> that is huge. Looks like a moving city. There's dolphins! Yeah. <gasps> dolphins! Where? Oh, oh, 
This is amazing! If all else fails, Woo! we went on a dolphin sightseeing boat ride. The weather was supposed to be better today, like lighter winds, blue skies, but the sea is way rougher than where we were practicing yesterday. And uh, if you remember, I didn't go that well. <laughs> Andy was just saying for a lot of boaters, it's a big deal just to get their boat across the channel. And we're just popping across to drop some e-foils in and then we're coming back to the other side. This all sounded so simple in my head when I had the idea. What do you think the chances are that we're making it back on the board? I'm still sticking with 20% chance. So on the way here, I was feeling really apprehensive about today. You know when you get that little knot in your stomach and you know it's a good adventure when you feel that because I feel a lot of the traveling we do, you know it's kind of going to go quite easy. But this is so many question marks around today. Oh, I feel nervous now. I actually feel nervous. <laughs> Woo! We've made it about a mile out to sea and Andy's had a warning light come up on the boat. What? Nothing. Also, there is no way that you can appreciate just how big this swell is in the camera. I'm not saying it's huge. I'm just saying the camera makes it look flat and it is definitely not flat. It's a water separator warning indicator. All right. Drain the water from the filters. Yeah, try and drain it. Have you got a cup or something? Not a single thing has gone as planned, no, but my favorite thing about these guys is that I honestly think they're having more fun because nothing is going as planned. It's just solving one problem at a time. The light didn't go off, but so even if one we're goes, back. Uh, <laughs> I think hope for the best is the new motto of this trip. Uh-oh. The boat literally just shut down. They're trying to empty the The crazy thing. I see a, a, what looks like a fuel filter. Uh, I think that fuel bill is just the, it just got water full water. of water. It's weird they both cut off at the same time. Super yeah, weird. maybe it, there's a clever auto shut off and that fills up. Yeah. Right. Anyway, it's empty. It does say you need to fill it back up with fuel. Here, we need to put some fuel back in the fuel filter, we think. You don't need much, but it's that way. Okay, yeah, stop. Okay, I think, I think I'm all right for now. Okay. Fire it up. Ooh. Just backfire. Oh, no. The last thing you want to see when you're in the middle of the English Channel is the top of your motor sitting in the front of the boat. We are stranded. You can barely see land in that direction, but uh, this was not the video that we planned on making. I don't want to say this too loudly because I don't want to stress anyone out, but, but we are just broken down in the middle of the water right now, really dangerously close to the ship. But if anybody can figure it out, these guys can. Who knew I was their biggest hype girl? Eamon's built multiple vans. Louie has converted multiple vehicles into other things. And Nate! <gasps> That's a great attitude. <laughs> Dungeness. We took a couple of waves over the, 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 the back. Nothing, well, I didn't think it was too severe, but we then had the water separation light come up on the dashboard. And then a minute or two later, both the engines cut out. Okay, all right, sounds like a serious problem. Sounds like you've got um, tank integrity issues. Uh, that water has made its way into your tank. Do you have a it. radio on board? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably put in a call to the Coast Guard. It doesn't feel like we're going to get to France so that you guys can <laughs> jet board back. There's a question to whether we'll even get the boat back to Brighton. Let's just have a beach holiday today, <laughs> eh? In this nuclear dystopian <laughs> beach. <laughs> Even though we had been advised to call the Coast Guard, the guys weren't going to give up that easy. Should we disconnect it and maybe like purge them out? They were as determined as ever to fix the engine and get to France. Everything they're talking about right now sounds like a foreign language to me, but it feels like we're making progress. They're just doing trial and error right now. There's still a chance we're going to get this done. Time is ticking though. This isn't worst case scenario because we're not in the shipping lane. If, uh, if we were sitting in the middle of the shipping lane right now, we would for sure be calling the Coast Guard but we broke down before we got to the shipping lane and now we're just drifting sideways. So we're just drifting parallel to the shipping lane. Start in France. Start, Start in, in France, French waters. Yes. So it doesn't have to, it just have to be just past the shipping lane. The we are, yes. haven't even solved so the issue <laughs> and everyone's excited about reporting back to the UK already. We still don't have a working engine. So 
Not only were we running out of daylight to complete this challenge, but we were also drifting even closer to the shipping lane, which would force us to call the Coast Guard. But just when it was starting to feel like all hope was yes! lost, hey! a tip from a YouTube video gave us a glimmer of hope. You have to fail them back up with Wait, you. Why didn't the guy on the phone say that? <laughs> call him back and see if he needs help. I'm gonna call him back and call, call him. us. <laughs> <laughs> this is it, Andy. This is it. Ooh, ooh, yeah. ooh. We got one. We got one engine. <laughs> We only need one engine, really. We only need one engine. Because you're going the same speed we're going. Half an engine. <laughs> it. it died again. Why is our good engine dying? Does the fuel filter still got a bit of a leak? I wish I could say that this triumphant scene meant that we had made it to France and the guys were on their way back to the UK. But in reality, we only had one jerry can of clean fuel to get us back to where we started. At this point, we had driven out to the edge of the shipping lane, floated eight miles east, and we were limping home towards Dungeness. Even though the boat wasn't 100%, the boys decided to put the boards in the water and ride the final 10 miles back to where we started. After the stress of being stranded in the English Channel subsided, we started to realize that this entire adventure had become much more about the journey than the destination. Well, all things considered, I'd say everything worked out just fine. I can't believe how calm it is out here in the middle of the English Channel. It would have been epic to say that we crossed the English Channel, but honestly, I think today will be more memorable. <laughs> and still really, really fun. Too soon. With the wrong group of people, this could have felt like an epic failure. But with this crew, it felt like the adventure we were all meant to be on. Even though we didn't accomplish the route we set out for, in the end, four friends went out on an adventure and made memories that will last a lifetime. <laughs> you nutter. With that said, we don't give up that easy. It won't be next week or maybe even this year, but these four will eventually make it across the English Channel. The adventure never ends! Bye guys! Bye guys. See you at home! Oh my gosh! Oh my god, what a day! <laughs> Is this the furthest you've ever been alone in the ocean? <laughs> I felt like my board was kind of just goop, goop, goop. And then all of a sudden, it's giving me like a no Wi-Fi signal. Nate is being a very good friend and staying with me and Louis is trying to go flagged down the boat which is continuing that direction <laughs> i would hope someone would do the same for me because this is my worst nightmare like <laughs> just floating out of here okay get my feet out of the water how many things are don't go stop talking today? yeah i thought you were gonna say how many things are swimming under us just I'll tow you back here i'll hold on your feet <laughs> this way do we look more like a seal <laughs> we're bigger and more intimidating this way all right you want me to hold on to your toes? <laughs> okay. I think, the, I think the boat will just come back and get it. Do you want to listen to us now? And everyone's left side, made... Left side. That was confusing. I had to go around the car and then I got the right lane and it just stayed there. <laughs> Have you got the instruction manual? It's oh, really yeah. good. It yeah, does yeah. talk you through everything. Okay. First man to ever say that. Oh, it's nice to <laughs>